Hello friends, welcome back to PS Deserve. My name is Ishwar and today's video we will be diving into some exciting new features that have come to Adobe Photoshop in 2024 update. As a reminder, the update was released last month, September of 23 and here we are in October. While Photoshop didn't get another major update this month, but Adobe did update Camera Raw and that's what we will be focusing on today's video. Let's start by taking a look at one of the standard features in Camera Raw, the Lens Blur. This is an early access feature which means Adobe is still fine tuning it and is open to your feedback. The Lens Blur feature replicates the effect of using a lens with a shallow depth of field to create a bokeh effect in your photos. Now if you are already a Photoshop user, you might be familiar with Neural Filter Depth Blur feature. It's quite a powerful tool. but Let's see how the lens blur in Camera Raw compares with the Neural Filter Depth Blur. I will walk you through how to use it with a couple of example photos. So right now we are in the Camera Raw. To access the lens blur feature, look for a panel on the right hand side of the screen. Click apply and the software will analyze your photo to identify the subjects. It does a fairly good job at this frankly speaking and you can fine tune the results as well. The first setting we will encounter is the blur amount. This controls the intensity of the blur and with zero meaning no blur and 100 giving you the maximum blur effect. And remember moderation is key when using tools like this. Too much blur can make your photo look unrealistic. Next let's explore the bokeh settings. You have a default settings for modern lenses but if you are feeling creative there are additional options to play around with. One of the key features in lens blur is focal range. This lets you control the range of focus from front to back in your photo. There is also visualize depth option that shows you a depth map of your photograph, helping you understand which parts of the photo are in foreground and which are in the background. You also have the option to focus on a specific point in your photo or have the software automatically detect and focus on the subject. This can be useful if the subject is not in the center of the frame. Let's move on to the refine section. Here you will find two brushes, focus brush and blur brush. These allow you to adjust areas of your photo that the lens blur feature may have missed. For example, you can use the blur brush to make any particular part in your image blurry, helping you to uh, emphasize the depth in your photo or you can use the focus brush to add any particular focus on your photo. Now it's worth noting that lens blur works best when it's enhancing existing blur in your photos. So if you have a photo with some natural blur in the background, lens blur can help to enhance that and make your subject stand out more. Next up, let's talk about the color mixture. This feature allows you to adjust the hue, saturation and luminance of specific colors in your photo. There is also a new point color feature that gives you precise control over a very specific color. You can use the eyedropper tool to select the color you want to adjust and then use the sliders to make your adjustments. The range slider controls how much your adjustments will affect similar colors in the photograph. If you need even more control, you can expand the advanced features section which lets you adjust the hue, saturation and luminance range for your selected color. And one thing to note is that the point color adjustments are global which means they affect the entire photograph. However, if you use a mask to isolate a specific area of your photo, you can use the point color panel to make adjustments only within that mask. And lastly, there is a new HDR feature in the basic panel. This isn't your typical photo merge HDR feature. Instead, it's designed for editing and exporting photos in an HDR format for HDR screens. It's a bit of nice feature since not many screens and apps support HDR. But by default, the HDR button is turned off in Camera Raw. If you would like to enable HDR editing by default for supported HDR photos, you can do so by navigating to Camera Raw Preferences, then to Raw Defaults and finally selecting Enable HDR Editing by default 
for HDR photos. So what exactly are supported for HDR photos? They include DNG files created by the merge to HDR feature, HDR photos captured in Lightroom for mobile, whether you are using iOS or Android and HDR, HEIF files. Before we dive into HDR editing process, it's important to note that to use the HDR output feature, you will need a supported HDR display. Once you have a supported HDR display, Adobe Camera Raw offers several new HDR capabilities when the HDR output is enabled. For starters, you will see an HDR button in the edit panel which allows you to enable HDR photo processing. Camera Raw also supports opening HDR formats such as 10-bit, HIF extension files from recent Canon, Nikon and Sony cameras. This means you can take advantage of the full range of colors and tones captured in these high quality files. Most options in the edit panel work similarly in both HDR and HDR modes. However, you may need to adjust the settings differently to achieve optimal results in HDR mode. HDR processing requires process version 3 or later, so make sure your software is up to date. When it comes to HDR photography, understanding the dynamic range of your image is key to making those impactful and eye-catching edits, right? So here is cool feature you should definitely know about if you are working with HDR photos in Camera Raw, the Visualize HDR option. This tool provides a color-coded visualization of different HDR ranges broken down into f-stop increments. This visual aid can help you understand the dynamic range in your photo and make more informed adjustments. So how do you access this option? It's super simple. Just right click on the histogram and from the context menu select HDR ranges. Alternatively you can also find the visualize HDR checkbox in the light panel. Once you toggle on this option you will see your photo change to show the different HDR ranges in various colors. It's a fantastic way to visually grasp where the highlights, midtones and shadows are in your image and how you can adjust them to achieve a desired look. After you have finished editing a photo in HDR mode, you can save it to your disk by clicking the save button. Don't forget to select the HDR output box in the color space section to ensure that your photo retains its HDR properties. That's it, you are now ready to start working with HDR photos in Adobe Camera Raw. Whether you are merging multiple exposures into a single HDR photo or editing a single HDR photo captured with your smartphone or camera, these new capabilities give you more control over the final result. Well, that wraps up our video on the three major updates in Camera Raw. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with more of my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you found this helpful, why not give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, thoughts or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Stay tuned for our next video. Until next time, take care. Happy editing.